everyone, welcome to this week's episode of Anime Cons TV. In this week's episode, we'll be talking about sewing patterns. Now, I really like to use sewing patterns, making my costumes. This is a small selection of the many sewing patterns I've collected over the past several years. Um, but I like using these because they give you nice foundation um, shapes to use for your costumes. And what's really cool is over the past few years, sewing pattern companies have noticed that cosplayers exist and have come up with a lot of patterns that are tailored specifically for customers. There are cosplayers who make sewing patterns for these companies to sell, which is really, really cool. Uh, so, for example, a few years ago, I made Peach and Daisy's gowns using a different pattern, but now there is a pattern specifically for Peach and Daisy's gowns, which is really cool. Um, there's also like this pattern that's Alice in Wonderland based. You know, not any kind of official outfits, but um, cute designs based off of off of those characters. Also, uh, Doctor Who designs. These are by Lori Ann Costume Designs, who does really awesome, cool, geeky stuff. And then also, this one is for foam working, which is really awesome. This is by Jackie Craft Cosplay. Um, so I would, if you don't follow her or Lori Ann on uh, social media, you totally should. They're great uh, customers to follow, which is really awesome. What I'm going to go into is um, kind of making sure you are picking the pattern that's right for you and you're picking the um, things like the right size and then knowing what you need for fabric and things like that afterwards. So one I'm going to talk about this pattern to kind of give you an overview. So on the front, it shows you the pattern number. So if you ever need to look it up, that's what they use. Now the sizing, the sizing is very important because you want to make sure that you buy the right size for you. Uh, patterns usually come in two, sometimes three pattern um, sizing. So usually a smaller one, a larger one, then maybe even um, a bigger one. And to pick your pattern size, you want to go to the back. You want to have a, um, a friend help measure you. That's easier than measuring yourself. And then you want to take your measurements and find the size that works for you. And this might be bigger than the size that you buy your commercial clothing in. Uh, don't let that get to you. Um, so what you want to do is you want to find the closest to your sizing here. Your sizing is not going to exactly match these numbers here. You might be um, like this size for your bust, but this size for your waist, maybe even the size for your hip. What you want to do is find the biggest size that fits your sizing. So like say if you have a 48 inch hip but a 28 inch waist and a 36 inch bust, you want to go to this size because it's easier to get your bust and waist down to fit these smaller sizes than it is to work with a 38 and move it up to a 40 because the fabric won't be there. So this is also why it's important to do a muslin, which we've talked about before. That way you can do a mock-up and get these adjusted to fit your smaller size for your bust and waist, but hopefully your hip will fit you. Um, <clears throat> also on the back, they talk about the fabrics that you want to use. So this suggests um, using a 60 inch wide fabric. Um, there's also 54 inch uh, fabric, um, but I think because of the big poofy skirt, it um, only really recommends using a 60 inch wide fabric. Um, so it recommends broadcloth, cotton types, crepe back satin, sateen, satin, taffeta. Um, if you need to match plaid stripes or if you have a one-way design, like for example this, <laughs> you need extra fabric because sometimes the pattern pieces like one piece will be going this way and another piece will be going this way but when they go together they're like this and so you want to make sure You'll have to lay them out in a different way so that the fabric all goes in the same direction. Um, and then also the illustrations on the side here, these show you the back view and the variance between the two. So it's mostly the same shape. There's some little differences like in the bottom here, in the collar, in the cuffs on the sleeve. Um, so you want to find the one you want and then pick the amount and then follow this here to find the amount of fabric that you need. So Say you're going to do A, A and B have the same lining. So if you're going to do dress A, depending on your size, you need either 4 or 4 and 3 eighths yards. And then um, you also need fabric for the collar and the bustle and the lower bands. And then you pick here. 
for what you need. Then you will also need interfacing. If you're using B, use these measurements here. Also forgot to go uh, notions. It'll show you what you need. So you need thread, an invisible zipper, elastic, and then um, everything else here is mostly for the accessories. So uh, craft foam, <coughs> uh, uh, air dry modeling, clay, Mod Podge, paint, uh, paint brushes, adhesive tape, one plastic sheet protector. I wonder what that's for. Um, a pin back, hair comb, clip on earrings, um, glue sticks, and a hot glue gun. So that's mostly for the accessories. And, and that's something new in these patterns too, is usually they're just fabric, but in this, it shows you how to make the brooches and how to make the crowns, which is really cool. And then it's all in French on the outside. So don't worry about that. So when you open it up, these are the pattern pieces. We won't worry about that because that's you just cut out the pattern pieces. <laughs> but this will help show you what pattern pieces to cut out. Because generally, sometimes you may need all of them and sometimes you don't. So again, it shows the illustrations again, front and back, a little bit bigger. Here it shows you all the pattern pieces that come with this pattern. And it has an illustration of all of them. And then it lists them out by number and, and names them. And if you notice after them, it says either A or B or A and B. So depending on what design you're using, you're going to cut out the ones that match those pieces. What I like to do is I draw a little circle after each piece I have to cut out. Um, or if I'm just using like a part of the pattern, like if I'm just doing the bodice or the skirt or the flounce or whatever, I'll just circle those ones. And then that way each for each pattern piece that I cut out, I uh, do a check mark and then that way I make sure I don't forget anything when I'm cutting out the fabric. Here's some general directions that it gives you for working with this pattern. This may be slightly different depending on the different companies. Uh, but the green line, that's the symbol for the green line. It's an arrow. And you want to place that arrow in the direction of the green line. So what this will do is help you um, lay something out that's straight. If it's on the bias, um, the arrow will be kind of diagonal, so that way it's cut out on the bias. Um, that's important to follow these because if it's out of line, and then it might get wonky and not and not um, fall right on your costume. And um, that's it. The, I mean, that's just the way the weave of the fabric works. Is you want to work with it, not against it. <clears throat> Um, if you see the one below it, that solid line, you want to place it on the fold of fabric. So for example, going back here, this front piece, there is the pattern piece is half of it. And what you do is you lay that part of it on the fold and then it opens up. So you cut one piece on the fold, opens up, and then you have your front piece. So you see that sometimes, especially for fronts of uh, bodices, fronts of fronts of skirts, facings, things like that. Um, it'll mark where the center front or the back of the garment is. That gives you kind of a center to work with. Also, if there's like a certain thing on the fabric you want to cut out that's in the center, you can use that to help you get it. Notches and dots are markings that help you match up the different parts to each other. Um, so it may not seem clear how certain parts match up, especially with ease. So use those to match up your pattern pieces correctly. The cutting line is a dark line that uh, you use to follow where to cut. And then there's these two parallel lines for lengthen or shorten lines. And what those are is they're on certain parts of the pattern. So like say you have a long torso or a short torso, you can find those lines on like the bodice pieces and adjust those to make it longer or to make it shorter to fit, fit your body type. Again, this is where a muslin comes in very helpful because then you can try it out and if it doesn't work, then maybe recut it again and make a different adjustment there. Seam allowance, um, unless it's uh, stated otherwise on the pattern piece itself, it's five eighths of an inch. So again, adjustments, this is what I talked about with the lengthening and shorting. So length lengthening, you wanna cut um, between those lines um, and then spread it uh, um, spread it apart and then use um, some tape and paper to kind of connect it back together. If you need to shorten it, then uh, just fold it up and create a pleat and tape it in place or pin it in place. If a pattern piece doesn't have these, have that 
those parallel lines on it, then you can adjust it at the lower end edge of the pattern. So here, I'm guessing that for like piece nine and 10 for the skirt, that um, the adjustment you just lengthen or shorten at the bottom. So before cutting, pre-shrink your fabric before you use it. I don't always use this, and I know I should. Um, but you want to wash it first so that it'll sh if there's any chance it will shrink, it'll do it before you make it. That way, if you wash your garment afterwards and it shrinks, it will, to it will do weird things to your garment. Circle your cutting layout. Um, we're going to get the cutting layout in a minute. And then uh, pin the fabric patterns to the fabric as shown in the cutting layouts. So this is below again. So there's a double thickness, a single thickness, and then if you're working with a pile or shaded or one-way designs, um, this is where all the patterns will have to go in the same direction. Um, you wanna use the width nap layouts. We'll get to that in a second. And then after cutting, you want to transfer the markings. So you can do this a couple ways. You can mark everything with um, a chalk or um, you can use a tracing paper and wheel um, you can use a water soluble pen um, I what I like to do is I snip the notches on the fabric to mark them with scissors just a little bit like a quarter of an inch um, and then I like to um, I like to mark my dots with a water soluble pen um, it's, it recommends pinning them here as a quick mark but if your pin falls out then then it's kind of hard to find where it went um, also some sewing instructions here. So you want to follow the sewing di di directions, which is what all these pages are. Um, so you want to pin or machine bait steams matching notches. So you, you want to match the notches together as you sew. That's kind of your like meet up points for the different pieces of fabric. Again, five eighths of an inch, unless otherwise stated. You want to press your seams, press your seams, press your seams. That is so important when sewing you want to press your seams um, unless otherwise indicated um, and then clipping whenever necessary um, and then trimming seams to reduce bulk as shown in these instructions so um, things like this especially corners curves you want to clip them or notch them that way when they're folded um, there isn't bulk in the seam allowance and that can look weird on the outside so you want to clip things like that that way they lie nice and flat and then special cutting notes, um, if something extends past a fold, there's an example of this below I can show you, you want to cut that last. And then you open up to a single thickness. And then also you want to, if you have um, a nap or one-way direction, mark that in your selvage to help you and make, kind of uh, keep you going in the right way as you're, as you're cutting away. Again, this is only really important if you're using something that's in a one-way direction. Okay, so again, so these are your cutting layouts. Um, if it has two things here, if it's a dark color, it's printed. You want the printed side down. If it's this, um, just an outline, you want the printed side up. Um, and then there'll be markings for special cutting notes. So these might vary differently, a little bit differently, depending on the size that you're using. So here it is with the lining just for the bodice pieces for the lining so here's the fold here's the selvages again below here's the fold here's the selvages and here's an example of um going off of um also this is also a really weird example of of how it's folded most times it's a fold at the bottom selvages at the top but here what it has is a fold here and a fold here and the selvages meet here towards the top that's really weird i've never seen that before and i've used hundreds of patterns um, but anyway, when you open that up, um, you cut one, you cut nine, and then you open that up to a single thickness, and then you cut seven. So that's basically what that means, and that was that um, note above. So here it shows all the different layouts to help you maximize the fabric and use as little as possible, because you don't want to waste really waste fabric on cutting layouts that don't really work. So they figure that out for you. Okay, and they have some sewing directions. Sometimes they have more than others. This also has instructions for working with craft foam, which is pretty cool. 
Um, but here it shows you to do how to do it, and it'll show you the sewing methods that are used in this pattern. So if a pattern is more complex, it'll have more instructions here. But this just has gathering, which is um, you know stitching two stitches and pulling them. I think we've gone over gathering before. And then under stitching, which I don't know if we've talked about before. So if you have a facing or if you have a lining, what you do is um, from the you press the uh, the seam allowance towards the lining and then you so and then you sew through those three layers from the lining and what that does is it connects the lining to the seam allowance and helps it live really flat this is really great if you're doing a facing or an underlying maybe I'll do an episode about that and then it talks about working with craft foam which I'm not going to go into too much because we've talked about craft foam a lot on the show um, and now it goes through all the instructions and see how it says dress A and B here. So you're going to follow these instructions for this step one, two, and three um, for both designs. But then here, when you get to steps four, five, and six, four and five go with collar A and collar A and then six and seven go with collar B. And then you bounce back to both views. So depending on which design you're using, and some designs have much bigger variants than this one does in patterns, um, just pay attention that you're using the right steps for the right um, design that you're going with. So as you're looking at the illustrations, if it's slightly shaded, then you wanna be looking at the right side of the fabric. If there's no shading, you wanna be looking at the wrong side of the fabric. If there's those hashes kind of in it, it's the interfacing. And then if it's a dark shading, that's the lining that you're looking at. So if you see here on step three and four, you'll be looking at the wrong side. But here on step five, you'll be looking at the right side. And then step three and four, page three and four, with the remaining steps go through here and that'll walk you through all the different steps so that's uh, the inner workings of a sewing pattern the different parts that you need to learn how they work so you can use a sewing pattern uh, to your advantage to create your costumes and once you get some experience with them um, you can play with them a lot. You can just use the shapes and then add on or take away to create whatever designs that you need. That's how I do a lot of my, um, a lot of my costumes. Now I wanted to make some recommendations of some patterns to start with if you've never used patterns before. And I would actually start with stuff that is not clothing. And because of that, and the reason for that is you don't have to really worry about fit with those, of them fitting to your body. Um, so there are tons of um, accessory uh, patterns out there. Um, there's bags, there's these little plush things, there's like aprons and curtains and all sorts of stuff. If you look in the pattern books, you'll see them. Um, so like this is for um, bags, this is for little, little, um, little stuffed animal fluffy thingies. Maybe I'll use this today and make something. Probably not. I would recommend doing a set of pajamas. Um, maybe if you're still learning, look at for something without a collar because collars can be kind of tricky, but it's a nice challenge, I think. And again, this is something that um, is very forgiving with the fit because you notice that the top just kind of doesn't really fit. Um, I mean, it does fit her. It's just not, <laughs> not fit to her body. And then um, you learn how to do uh, a casing, elastic casing, which is very important. And that fit is very forgiving with the elastic. So this is something... Um, that is very simple to use and learn and then you have a new pair of pajamas. So that's info about sewing uh, sewing patterns that I hope is very helpful. Um, if you've so used sewing patterns in the past for your costumes, let us know. We'd love to see uh, which patterns you use to make which costumes. Um, if you have any recommendations for future uh, episodes as well, uh, please let us know. Also, we've done some episodes about patterns in the past, uh, so you can check those out too with some information about um, going through the steps and using them and how to modify them into, uh, into costumes, so totally check that out. And until next time, we'll see you guys later. Bye!